welcome to the Inside All Day podcast. As always, spoiler warning ahead. Hello out there, podcast universe. Welcome to the Inside All Day podcast, where today inside, we've been getting Legend, wait for it, Dairy. That's right, we're watching Legend, you know, the 1985 American epic dark fantasy adventure film. You may know a couple of the names in there, Tom Cruise, Tim Curry, and it's all around good time. Joined, as always, by my lovely wife, Nadia. Hello. And yeah, we're... Uh, just watched the movie. We're sitting down to talk to you about it right now, fresh off the uh, fresh off our take. This is kind of going to be included in our '80s series that we're going to try to do, where we watch an '80s movie and review it that we've never seen, or at least one of us has never seen. Yeah, yeah. So this would be a this would be a good time. So for those of you who don't know, once again, it's epic dark fantasy. Uh, it's directed uh, by Ridley Scott, starring Tom Cruise, Mia Sarah, Tim Curry, David Bennett, Alice Playden, Bill. Billy Party, Cork Hubert, and Annabelle Layden. Lanyon. L- Lanyon. Well, I can say the name, I promise. Annabelle Lanyon. I kind of right that time. And this was my pick. Yes, this was Nadia's pick. For those of you who have not seen it, the film revolves around Jack, played by Tom Cruise, a pure being who must stop the Lord of Darkness, who plots to cover the world with eternal night. Well, with that said, I will say, just to begin with, the, uh, the movie poster, super dope. Oh, one of the ones that I used. Yeah. That I sent you over. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's well, a Chris, classic. I've, I've seen it. I've seen it a couple of times throughout my childhood. Watching it as an adult, because it's been many, many years. Um, I don't know if it's appropriate for kids back then. But a lot of movies in the 80s, we all watched that weren't appro- <laughs> really appropriate. It was a little different back then, different times. Yeah. What did you think of it? I So I'd never seen this movie before. In fact, up until a couple of years ago when you mentioned it to me, um, I, I, no, I had no idea what it was. You'd just basically be like, oh yeah, young Tom Cruise, Tim Curry plays the devil. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and, and I mean, I was sold with Tim Curry plays the devil. But uh, it, it was interesting, it was 80s, it was fun, and it was more glitter than I would ever allow in my household. Yeah, they spend 14.2 or $4 million on all types of glitter for that movie. Yeah, I... Back uh, in the 80s. Back in the 80s. I want to adjust that for inflation now, and you might be able to buy a carton of eggs. I'm just like, that's a lot of glitter. You won't even let me buy $2 worth of glitter in the house. Let alone, like, that would be your nightmare to work on that set. Oh, I, yeah, I absolutely detest glitter. It, uh, to be like Anakin Skywalker, it gets everywhere. That's true. That's true. Uh, so, overall, what would you give it a score of? Ooh, I'm going to go ahead and give that a solid 7.75. Interesting. I kind of feel the same way seeing it as an adult, as a kid. I, I really liked it. It was one of my introduction to fantasy as like movies and stuff. Prior to that, I, maybe I had seen Willow at the same time. And mind you, this movie was made in 1985. I was born in 1987. So right, right. it came out way before before I was born. Before well, you were born. When some of this is even really like it gets it's it can be hard to hit those right notes, right? Where it's, where it stays a classic because for instance, The Goonies. I've never seen The Goonies. And it's one of those movies where I really think you had to see it as a kid. You had to have that to really get that nostalgia pull. Because I've tried to watch it as an adult knowing that I missed out on it. And yeah, I couldn't make it through the Goonies. Hmm. Yeah, right now Legend is sitting at a 41% uh, for critics on Rotten Tomato. But a 73% for audience score. Yes, if you just want to watch young Tom Cruise look at things with awe and wonder. The year before he was became Scientologist Scientologist. (laughs) and he looks the same he has not aged I don't know what kind of voodoo magic he is I just told you he's a being of pure good yeah okay 
<laughs> not, not not that there's anything wrong with that, but uh, easy Seinfeld. He's definitely the last um, movie superstar, anyway, right now. Oh yeah, in this current yeah. period time of movies. But uh, I wanted to read some of the reviews to you. Yeah, hit me. So the first one is. Uh, now these are I, I have a couple good ones and a couple bad ones. So okay. we're gonna start with the bad. See how I feel. I don't want to remember any more about Legend than to make sure I include it in my worst film of 1986 list and never rent it. Rent it, man. Uh, when it comes out <laughs> as a video cassette, Legend may turn out to be legendary, but not in the way filmmakers intended. Legend is a fairy tale produced on a grand scale. At the same time, the basic premise is alarmingly, alarmingly thin uh, and a component of any number of ancient fairy tales. Yeah, the, that, that sounds about right. I mean, let's be honest. The Well, I mean, the writer's only reference was uh, fairies. Some, uh, so And glitter. And glitter, yes. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, I think glitter made up about 90% of the plot. <laughs> I mean, there wasn't a whole lot going on. It's like, hey, we gotta get you know, basic basic hero's journey, right? Yeah, basic story of darkness versus light, good versus evil, redemption mm -hmm. story, all, all put together. I like it. Chases, I, escapes. Yeah, exactly. It it reminds me of you know those classics I watched as a kid, like Willow and uh, Princess Bride, Princess Bride and stuff. Like it it fits in that corner of fantasy for me. And it's just enjoyable. It was supposed to be darker than... And we watched the director's cut, so we got 20 extra minutes of the film. There's actually four versions of it, too, out there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but we uh, we saw the longer version of it, but it went through also rewrite 15 times before it started production. So just once or twice, then? Yeah. So here's some of the good reviews. Legend Remains as Stunning... Uh, I'm sorry, Legend remains a stunning fairy floss fantasy. 95 minutes of lovingly crafted super real escapism. And this is my favorite review of it. This is a fantasy painting coming to life as a movie. If you know anything about fantasy paintings, you will also know that most fantasy paintings don't have a story or a plot to them. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Hyper accurate, though. That's a great review. Yeah. It's stunningly beautiful. Yeah, I mean, I think they it won an Oscar for makeup. Well, the especially was it like the like the swamp hag. Yes, that it's, that makeup was that was killer. That was that creepy. Was absolutely killer. How glossy that swamp hag looked like. You think me fair, Jack? And you know, they wanted to in a sense like Disneyfy the movie when they were first came out to kind of open it up to a broader audience, also to probably make their money back on it. I mean, an R-rated fantasy back in the 80s probably wasn't gonna make as much money as, you know, if you rated no, not, something PG-13. PG no, not back then. Nowadays it would. So. No, for sure. I mean, when you look at it, the, you know, some of the costume was cool. That was for certain the, uh, for sure her, her, her creepy darkness gown dance scene possession corruption deal. That that was interesting. I love the costume design of that. That would be a killer Halloween costume. I wonder if anybody would pick up on it. Uh, yeah, I I couldn't tell you. I mean, you're talking to someone who just saw it for the first time. And they they didn't actually want little people to play the goblins either in that movie. Why not? Yeah. Why not? Uh, they just did. They wanted to cast uh appropriate actors. It was no easy task, but they just didn't want. To I guess I don't know where are you getting this information from. Uh, Screen Rant, yeah. uh, and so they they shot it a way that would allow easier framing for editors. Could make cast members simply look like they were dwarf sized. Okay, so they did kind of like the Lord, Lord of, the of the Rings, Rings yeah. Before Lord well, of the before Rings, Rings right? <laughs> we got there at the same time. But yeah, I I enjoy it. I think it would be something. I would always cherish and look back at watching it. I mean, that was during Nadia's dark fantasy, angsty preteen years. And as someone who's only seen it as an adult, you know, I, if you put it on because you really had to watch it, I'd probably sit there and watch it with you, but yeah, I'd probably never watch it again. Really? Yeah. Why? It, it just, you know, I'm a modern American, short attention span. I want faster. 
But you like D&D and there were so many D&D tropes in it. I do you love Dungeons and Dragons? Which is interesting that the writer's influence was fairies, but not D&D. Hasn't D&D been around for a really long time? Uh, what, what, what year did it release? I have no idea. Oh. It was the 80s? It was, was the 80s? Was it the 70s? We're, gonna, we're looking real bad right now. Right. And to me, it was really funny because, you know, everybody, when you watch it, you expect, okay, the princess is going to be the one of good heart and innocence but apparently she really wanted that forest tom cruise she wanted Jack. that yeah 1974 so yeah, so, yeah. So, 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 so it could have had some influence to it oh, i'm sure yeah it did. so to me my favorite character out of all of them will probably have to be tim curry's the darkness well yeah i mean tim curry just brings such a charisma in any role he does when i listen to him in movies i always think of Fern Gully and reference back to the ooze and Fern Gully because that's him uh, singing it and I'm just that that's where my that's where I, I kind of fall back into but you said you I think, you think more of like Clue. slap like slapsticky Tim Curry so like either like Clue Tim Curry or like Muppet Treasure Island oh okay okay yeah no I I always think of that ooze that was definitely way more inappropriate at the time I don't even, I barely remember Ferngully. I saw Ferngully once. Oh, just go I watch mean, Avatar. It's v pretty much the adult on version VHS. of it. VHS. Uh, like VHS. a very, very, so obviously a very, very long time ago. <laughs> Didn't see it in theaters. I saw it on VHS when I was a child. It, Easy internet. It, that makeup must have weighed a ton. And those it, contacts. Yeah. Those, those look painful. With the cap. I'm the sure those are caps. cap contacts. I, I'm a hundred percent, maybe not hundred percent sure, but at least I think they might. They probably are full cap, and full caps are really well. When I when I used to work with them, they were they were not comfortable for actors. But back in the eighties, I can't imagine they were. I'm super sure the technology was not better. Yeah, back then. But that uh, that whole makeup design of the devil, uh, I like it. It and you know what? To me, the makeup holds up in this movie. The well, character not did designs. the makeup hold up really well. I mean, I didn't pause it. I didn't look anything up, but I, I felt like if you go back and watch the fight scene between Jack and the Darkness, you know, there's this there there's some of the some of the wider shots where he where the Darkness is swinging the sword. It looked to me like it was just probably a mask because the expression wasn't would never change. Mm. And so I think, but I think even at that though, so it was somebody, you know, who who you know somebody who had the the skills in the in the stilts for the for the darkness's goat legs for his stunt double yeah and then you that. know you throw the mask over it yeah it becomes a uh, becomes a whole deal but I mean I think they did a really good job on that I think that looked pretty good I think all of I mean really all of, boop sorry we had a little technical difficulty there but as I was starting to say yeah all of the makeup for the goblins the swamp hag the darkness all looked fantastic the dwarves. Yeah, everything holds excellent. up. Yeah, yeah, it was just really good practical effects. To me, the only thing is that didn't hold up is sometimes the the backdrops, the glitter. Well, the gl tons of glitter. I, I, I can't get over the glitter. I'll tell you, when I I'm watched it as a kid, like never noticed that much glitter. There was glitter in the makeup, glitter in the sweat, glitter uh, in the sand. You're literally just raining from the of glitter. skies at all times. In the background, just pay attention to the background. It's just raining from the sky at all times. And it just. I, I don't I don't understand why the glitter. I mean, they were Maybe probably to... literally. I guarantee someone at some point sneezed glitter out of their nose. Oh, I can't imagine breathing in all that stuff. Oh yeah, it was the. It's probably what's Different... keeping Tom Cruise young. Yeah right. My least favorite character was definitely Lily, the princess. Yeah, well, you know, she was just. She was very annoying. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's just annoying. Spoiled what girl? Spoiled, spoiled brat. Spoiled brat. I mean, I get it. She's supposed to envision what a princess is, right? Innocent, curious, stubborn. I don't know if stubborn's a thing, you know. But when, in the beginning, when Jack was like, oh, well, I the have stubbornness, some... stubbornness of youth. Well, when Jack took her to see the unicorns for the first time, as a surprise, she just was like, nah, I'm going to go pet one. It's like, hey, this is like, this is, this not... is so important. I'm going to blindfold you. Even though I trust you, because like this is that important. This is how protective we have to be of the situation. Also, thank you for not listening to me and molesting my unicorns. Right. I mean, 
I maybe it's just a it's a trope of princesses back then that they they have to do something stupid to get captured so that the you know the hero can come save her. For sure, for sure. Maybe when in the eighties, whether it be Jack or an Italian plumber. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> But she goes through this whole process. In the beginning of the movie, you're introduced to to the darkness, but you don't get to see him. Mm -hmm. And basically, he's complaining, sultry tones. complaining about there's too much light in the world, right? Too much light. So he's like, I feel a prince presence, and it's the the unicorns, which those horns look like they were gonna fall off. Um, <laughs> the unicorns, and he instructs his goblins to pretty much go and. Kill the unicorns, bring me back the horn. It's magical. Woo. Uh, and, you know, uh, so that starts that journey part. And then we have Lily, who is a princess who likes to, I guess, hang out with common folk all the time and has a secret forest boyfriend named Jack. And, you know, of course, everybody brings up the fact of, like, why isn't she married or has suitors or stuff? And she just wants to frolic barefoot in the forest with Jack. Um, okay, I get it. Tom Cruise wasn't a bad looking guy back then. I get it. Totally Frolic understand. Frolic away. Frolic away. And then she like uh, does the thing with the unicorns. Basically destroys the whole world. Freezes right. freezes the common folk that she was hanging out with. Including the their baby. Yeah. Inc I didn't realize in the f first time viewing that when I was younger. They she killed a baby. It froze and, the baby. And do, and do you remember what I said? No. That's cold. Oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah, True turns quote. the Real whole quote. forest and world into winter and darkness. And then Jack, they both have to go through a redemption period where she's trying to, to warn the last unicorn, which is a different movie, which is a whole different movie, uh, last unicorn and, you know, get to kidnapped I'm, I'm really butchering this really bad kidnapped and then tom cruise's character who's never picked up a sword in his life and apparently they don't make pants back then has to find was, armor hang Link out with the legend of zelda design i wouldn't it be a little bit longer though i felt like it came to his mid thigh it, it, it's not for agile the... movement and sexiness but wouldn't and sexiness <sighs> but wouldn't it get like vulnerable down there well, I mean, potentially, but that's why you're... Like, what if you have to climb over a tree? And your best way is, like, it's a huge log. So you have to, like, put well, swing one I mean, leg you over... you could tell if it was a huge log. It was pretty short. I meant, like, you know, you kind of saddle it. Wouldn't that hurt? <laughs> keep going, please. I'm just asking. Please, keep I'm asking going. you. I don't have the equipment. I'm asking you. Would it hurt to, like... I don't understand. Would I don't you get a splinter? So, so he's, he's, like... You know, walking around in this forest, do 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 do, doing his Jack stuff, do do do, smiling yeah. really creepily, Jacking around and squatting down yeah. like I don't know, and comes across a huge log in the middle of the forest. Okay, I feel like we're getting very far away from the topic. Let's go. And he's got to climb over it. Okay. So in but in kind of like when you when you climb over a fence, but a so little fence. So you're like one leg over. Over and yeah. Then you're like and hop other leg over. Yeah. So. Well, I mean, wouldn't you want protection down there instead of your bare yeah, ass on a, wood? That's such a very. What if you get a splinter? That's a very specific. That's a very specific reference point. Also, you know, if he's being a gentleman about it, he's really going at that pace. I mean, you should go one leg, get the whole thing by the coin purse, just lift it up, <laughs> then you go with the other leg, but and then you put it down gently. You don't want to rough anything up. And then, I just, I mean, you're in the forest. There's ticks. There's bugs there's things no, it's a magic force there's, there's just snakes glitter. what if a snake bites yeah, your gl snake glitter snake a glitter snake oh and what if you got glitter down there i'm sure there is gl there's glitter everywhere but i just don't understand why he can't wear pants because he's pure of heart at some point in a fight scene when when he, they're trying to save the the elf goblin dude with the weird arm with, with the with the rooster hand yeah like he flips over and for a brief moment I think he was wearing tights. I'm sure he was. For a brief moment what, there. You think, what, you think he Glittery just, tights, though. Do you think Tom Cruise was just G.I. Joe in it down there? No, I the think commando? he had probably had like a Speedo part of a costume down there. But 
it, from the way the flames reflected in the lighting, it looked like almost he had like these. Tell l- me more glittery about how tights. closely you were looking. <laughs> And then the other part I don't understand is, you know, when they finally get to Darkness's lair and they're saving Lily and the other unicorn Mm -hmm. and there's that dance scene that, that, you know, and Mm -hmm. then there was a statue in the background that moved and then just moved to the center of the table. So there was really no purpose in paying that digital effects artist. But um, (laughs) the the way they were trying to take down Darkness was doing the the light reflection on Mm -hmm. the things. Mm -hmm. In the one elf that climbed to the top to get the sun's reflection. First of all, it was obviously... Una that flew to the top? Yeah, Una flew to the top to get Sprite. Uh, first of all, the the sun was, like, setting. Yeah, exactly. So it was at the perfect angle. But when a sun sets, you don't really get, like, a ray of light like that. And then why did the elf fall it's asleep? Fantasy. We don't need logic. Why did the elf fall asleep? Because he missed, he missed second breakfast. <laughs> I don't get why he was snoring. And he's, she's like, and why would you pick that place to fall asleep? Also, I don't understand why she needed him for that. Like, it Couldn't seemed like she, she could lift have, it? Yeah, it felt like... But she I tried to, like and she, she was like, ugh. She couldn't do it. I mean, it, it didn't seem to be a problem like the rest of the time. They were all throwing him around. I guess maybe she has like the hollow bones like a bird. That's how she flies. She was a weird design, too, a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. Kind of like a Tinkerbell, but, not, but crazy eyes. David Bowie was Tinkerbell. If David Bowie had a child and it was a girl. If the Goblin King had a child. That's what was, the child yeah, would look like would with crazy eyes. Mm-hmm. Like severe crazy eyes. Mm-hmm. And it's the same concept of uh, her relationship with Jack is similar to Peter Pan and Tinkerbell. Tinkerbell has always had the hots for Peter Pan. Don't quote me on it, but I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Tinkerbell's always had the hots for Peter Pan. So that's why she's jealous of Wendy. That's why she doesn't like Wendy. She wants her out. So same kind of concept. Una has a... Saying she thinks Peter's bangerang. She wants to bangerang Jack. And <laughs> Lily's in the way. You know. Mm-hmm. That's why she was spying on her. I was surprised. Well, I... and then she tried to be Lily. And I was like, uh-oh. It looks like homeboy here failed his wisdom save. Jack. And he's like, no! I can't kiss you. I'm like, oh! Oh! Critical success! He, hit, he actually rolled a 20. My bad. I mean, like, why can't he kiss her? Because he's pure and he has to remain pure for her. Uh, he's I promised mean, himself to her. He's got to go find that ring, which, by the way, you know, like he's like, listen. you have to go do your thing and go find that ring again at the end. I was like, why did they just use the unicorn horn to wish for the ring? Like, you could have saved a lot of time, really. Listen, if we were in a situation like this, like and what? you were in a life-death situation, and a fairy came to you and said, Chris, you have to kiss me to, to be able to save me, right? To mm-hmm. save your wife. Go for it, baby. Don't waste time. It's okay. No, I read Dresden File and all, all the fae are generally liars, so no, I wouldn't kiss. That would just I mean, be, yeah, uh, it would be bad being a problem for me. But I'm saying, if you had to kiss somebody else to save me, I'd be okay with it. I'm okay. Okay, interesting. I mean, I would probably hold it over your head after we were, like, safe and secure for the rest of your life, but yeah. I'm, you, you do what you think you need to do. <laughs> he says, like, I'm going to go to, like, the mall and start macking on some random stranger and be like, it was to save your life. Yes, exactly. But I think... I don't know why I'm going to the mall to mack on a random stranger. The elves were an interesting design, too, because they were almost... They, it It was weird to me to see elves short and... The dwarves, you mean? Well, there was the dwarves, but... Um, oh, like the little boy? What's his name? Gump? Gump? Gump. It starts Gump. with a G. That, listen, out of all the acting in that whole film, that, that, little, little, kid. that little kid was bringing it. And his vocals were dubbed by a, a woman actress. Yeah, but well, I mean... Well, a woman act- an actress, obviously. So, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, but no, but the, you go back and man, I will say watching it, I was actually pretty impressed because like, that, that little kid put it on full send. Yeah, right? And I would feel so ridiculous... This is why I can't be an actor. Because if you put me in a little Speedo with ears and a glitter all over me, I, I couldn't I couldn't hold it in. I wouldn't be able to hold it in. I'd be laughing my ass off. Be like, why? I'm so ridiculous looking. Well, to, why? E- to even get you into that would probably require copious amounts of, like, I don't know, hallucinogenics. 
Interesting. I wonder who was on Hallucinogenics when they made this movie. Definitely like, Ridley Scott. No, I'm just kidding. Too. Not saying he actually. That was intended as a joke. It was intended as a joke. For all legal intents and purposes, purposes, that is a joke. So we know he also directed uh, Blade Runner. And there's actually a connection between the unicorn legend, the movie, and Blade, Blade Runner. I guess uh, he told the writers that he wanted to tell a story involving unicorns, the f uh, fastest steed on Earth. So it... Interesting. Yeah, so it started to develop this story while he was still filming Blade Runner. Hmm. So, yeah. So literally just really this guy going, I want to make a movie about unicorns. Yeah. Everything else be damned. Hey, fair. you know what? I want to be a fair unicorn enough. handler. Yeah, that, that was the best as you're watching the credits go. Or somebody was like, it was stunt coordinator slash unicorn master. I'm like, somebody I like, I want that just for my resume, please. Uh, just put that as my thing in the movie. I think I might actually put that on master. my resume. And see if anybody says anything. Hey, 2005 uh, Times Magazine yeah. Person of the Year, right here. Oh, right. You have that on your resume. Yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah. But anyway, <sighs> that would be our review of Legend. Yeah. I would sure. say I give it a, same with you, solid 7.5. 7 7.5. If you haven't seen it, check it out. If you have seen it and want to watch it again, well, that's up if to you. If you like classic fantasy, you'll enjoy it. Now, I will be interested to see how uh the new D, D movie will hold up that uh, was a bad segue but it leads into fantasy a little bit because you know we could talk about lord of the rings all day we could talk about other fantasy series but uh that was one movie we forgot to mention about our excitement in our last podcast episode so i thought about bringing it up here before we end um are you excited to see the new D, &D movie i'm intrigued to see the new D, &D movie i'm skeptical of uh D &D how it's going to be, yeah. But uh, let's, let's let's end it with this. We watch Nadia's movie next time. We're going to be talking about my film. And uh, you should join us in watching Big Trouble in Little China. Big Trouble in Little China. All right, folks. Have Thank a great evening. Thanks for being day. inside all day with us. Yep. Follow us. Like us. Leave us reviews. www. Would you kindly subscribe, inside like, follow, star. Do all the things. All day, all night.